Jane's Liz and the beggar that sews. Welcome to my channel if you're new and welcome back if you are a subscriber. As always, it's really lovely to have you here as I share my sewing journey. So welcome back to my channel. Um, today I'm going to be sharing what I wore as part of Me Made May for week two. Um, so I tried this week as well, which is my pledge for the whole month of May, to wear a different outfit every day. And I'm hoping throughout the month of May I won't have any outfit repeats. Um, so I thought this would be a really good way of showing you some of the garments that I've got in my wardrobe because um, one of my most requested vlogs is an insight into my wardrobe and all of the garments that I've got because I've got quite a lot of garments. Um, so I thought by sharing every week of my outfits because they're going to be different it would give you a real insight into all the different garments that I've got particularly because I'm trying to draw on some of my older makes and that's what I've done this week. I've got some of my favourite summer dresses out um, I wore some leggings, a jumpsuit, a skirt and t-shirt, um, so a bit of a mix actually and some collots as well this week with a blouse. Um, so I've really tried to think carefully about utilising some of those um, sort of plainer pieces that I've got in my wardrobe to go with some of those jazzier pieces. So I'm just going to go through um, every day and the outfits. I'll put pictures in of me wearing them and I'll link all of the patterns down below. I probably won't be able to link the fabrics just because they are quite old makes, some of them. Um, and there's one garment, which was the um, True Bias Nova jumpsuit, which I'm going to talk about first, was in fabric from Material Girl Laura, and she doesn't sell fabric anymore. So before I share what I wore this week, I'll let you know what I'm wearing. I am wearing a Our Lady of Leisure gimlet boiler suit made in this gorgeous needle cord fabric. Um, um, it's kind of got Liberty print uh, sort of vibes to it with that beautiful floral detail. This was a D-stash fabric. I can't remember where, which D-stash I got it from because I bought it ages ago, but I love this boiler suit. I always forget, I've made about four or five of them and I always forget about them and then I'm reminded and I get them out. It was cold today and it was raining, so this was the perfect thing to put on. Um, so yeah, it's got a collar and then you've got buttons down the bodice. There's a tie that's like a belt that is sewn on the back because it is quite roomy. And then that just comes around the front front, and you fasten it. It's got pockets, which are really roomy too. In terms of the trouser, it goes all the way down to the ankle and you can roll it up if you want to. I'll put pictures in of me wearing this and I'll link the pattern down below as well. But like I said, I've made quite a few of these boiler suits. Um, I love the way that they fit me and they're super duper comfortable to wear as well. So on to day eight and it was quite a warm sunny day in London um, and it was the weekend. So I dug out one of my True Bias Nova jumpsuit and I chose my Nova jumpsuit that's made in this fabric that I got from Material Girl Laura ages ago. I absolutely love it. It's a, I think it was a viscose jersey because this is quite a slinky version. It feels quite drapey and it's lovely and soft. I love the True Bias Nova jumpsuit. It's got quite a scooped front and it's got the same scooped back. Um, you can choose to have elastic across the tummy, which I've done with all of my versions. And then you've got elastic on the bottom uh, to create sort of these gathers at the bottom and you've got that little cuff detail as well. And then it's also got pockets, which I absolutely love. I don't wear these to school just because the neckline is quite scooped and I feel like it's just a little bit too revealing for me to wear to school. So I tend to wear these at the weekend or in the holidays when the weather's nice and warm. I've also worn these layered up with a t-shirt underneath and that works really nicely as well. Just if the weather isn't quite warm enough for no sleeves, pop a little t-shirt on underneath and then pop this on and it works really nicely. And it's definitely secret pyjamas. It's so comfortable to wear, especially if you decide not to have that elastic across the tummy area. Um, I've seen so many beautiful versions where they don't choose to have the elastic across the tummy. I'm yet to try that version because I feel like I need that for a little bit of shaping on me. Um, I'm quite straight in terms of my bodice, so I feel like I do need um, the elastic to sort of create some of that shaping when I'm wearing the jumpsuit. Um, I'll just get the pattern details for you. It's a pattern by True Bias. It's a really straightforward pattern to sew up and I've sewn up quite a few versions. Here are the um, line drawings. I've just got my little scribbly notes on there. Um, so you can choose to do a play suit with the elastic across the tummy or you can choose not to have the elastic across the tummy. And then you've got elastic at the bottom and this is the full length jumpsuit. And then it's got facing, which is quite deep on the inside as well. And you use that facing to secure the po pockets in place. 
and then when you're inserting the elastic you use that facing to create the channel for the elastic as well so it's a really clever construction and um, it comes in sizes there's 0 to 18 or there's 14 to 30 and it's aimed at advanced beginner sewists um, it's a knit jumpsuit with four views all views have a fully faced neckline and armholes views a and b have a wide elastic waistband and inseam pockets Views C and D have a straight fit through the waist and attached front pockets. Views A and C are a short romper length, while views B and D are a long length with an elastic casing at the ankle. In terms of fabric recommendations, they recommend light to medium weight knit fabrics with 20% or more stretch, such as cotton, interlock or t-shirt jersey. And then less stable knits with a lot of stretch, like rayon or bamboo, should be used with caution as they may affect the fit. So in terms of sizes, for a size zero, it's a 32 inch chest measurement, 26 inch waist measurement and 34 inch hip measurement. And then for a 30, it's a 57 and a half inch chest measurement, 50 and a half inch waist measurement and 59 and a half inch hip measurement. Um, it's a really lovely, comfortable pattern to wear and it's really great to sew up to. And it's great that you've got these different variations. So I'm definitely going to try this variation without the waistband just to see what I think of the sort of style on me with that looser fit. So that's what I wore on day eight. And then day nine, it was a school day and it was quite warm. So I popped on one of my favourite um, dress patterns, which is the Deer and Doe Myosotis dress. And I made this version last year, just before my holidays. I sewed it up the night before we were going away. I just got the itch to sew up a summer dress before we went. It's definitely comfortable enough to wear to travel in, but it's in this gorgeous viscose fabric that I got from Sew Me Sunshine. And I just think it's such beautiful, bright summer colors. And then the buttons that I chose to use are, um, I think they're Pigeon Wishes um, buttons. They're so lovely and they go beautifully with that gorgeous floral fabric. So I absolutely love the Deer and Doe Myosotis dress. I've made so many versions. It's got this really lovely mandarin collar, quite subtle V neckline, and then you've got the buttons that go down the bodice. It's got a lovely gathered skirt. You can put pockets in. I didn't put pockets in this one. Um, I don't think I had enough fabric and I was also saving time um, because I knew that I only had an evening to sew it up and I really wanted to take it away with me. And then you've got an option to add a ruffle on the bottom and that's what I've done with this version. I'm all about a ruffle. I absolutely love a ruffle. And it's so lovely and drapey in this viscose fabric. It really was perfect for taking away uh, when the weather was going to be really hot and I wore it out to dinner quite a few times as well. So I'm really pleased that I got that sewn up. And then I wore it to work and I just popped on a denim jacket um, whilst the weather warmed up because in the morning, um, because we're in the spring season at the moment, in the morning it's still quite chilly, but by the afternoon it gets quite warm. So I could take my denim jacket off by the afternoon and it was lovely to wear to school. So I've got the pattern here, it's the Deer and Doe Myosotis. What I tend to do is I sew up this version. Actually, there's an option to put ruffles on the sleeves, but I haven't done that. Um, I usually sew up this version, which has got the longer length skirt, and then I add this ruffle onto this dress so it ends up kind of like a midi length dress on me and that's just my preferred length. I've done that with all of my versions of the Deer and Doe Myosotis. Um, but that's what it looks like. It's got bust darts and then it's got darts here at the waist as well. And then it's got a lovely gathered skirt. There's an option to add the ruffles on the sleeves as well or you can just have short sleeves and that's what I've gone for with that version. And then you've got this lovely ruffle to go on the bottom as well. I love this dress pattern. I've sewn it up so many times. Here are the line drawing, just so you can see what it looks like. So that's version A. And the version A has got the ruffle and the ruffle on the sleeves. And then we've got version B, which is here. And that hasn't got the ruffle on the bottom and it hasn't got the ruffle on the sleeves. In terms of sizes, um, it comes in a size 34 up to a 52. So for a 34, it's a 31 and a half inch bust measurement, 23 and a half inch waist measurement, and 33 and three quarter inch hip measurement. And then for a 52, it's a 45 and 5 eighths of an inch bust measurement, 37 and 3 quarter inch waist measurement and 48 inch hip measurement. In terms of fabric recommendations, they recommend chambray, rayon twill, batiste, double gauze, lightweight cotton sateen. Um, and it says to allow extra fabric to match the stripes or the plaids. Version A is definitely my favourite version to sew up with that ruffle on the bottom, but leaving off the ruffle on the sleeves. And then I just use the longer length skirt that you get for version B that stops at your knee. And then I add that ruffle just to add a little bit of extra length. 
Um, it's really comfortable to wear. It's a little bit roomy um, and it's meant to be a little bit roomy, but that just means it's super duper comfortable to wear as well. So that's what I wore on day nine. On day 10, it was another school day um, and I opted for more ruffles. Um, but I went for a t-shirt with a skirt and it's a pattern that I've talked about before. They're both patterns that I've talked about before because I wore them last week, but a different skirt and a different t-shirt as in the fabric, but it was the same pattern. And it was these two beautiful makes paired together. So it's a Tinny and the Buttons Tabitha t-shirt and then a little pomegranate uh, Sabina skirt. And I love this fabric. It's so lovely and bright and colourful. And I just thought this lilac t-shirt really drew out some of those blush splodges that I've got all over that skirt um, and that lovely fabric. This is a viscose crepe and it's super duper drapey and that ruffle just works beautifully in that crepe fabric. So the Sabina skirt has got this lovely elasticated waistband which makes it really comfortable. Um, it's got these lovely um, slightly slanted pockets here, really lovely and deep. And then you've got a ruffle on the bottom, so it makes it like a midi length skirt. And the, the um, Tabitha t-shirt just went beautifully with the skirt. I just tucked it in. Um, I really love the Tabitha t-shirt. It's ever so slightly sort of roomy, and that was the look that I was going for. I tend to tuck this into the skirt and then pull it out a little bit so it's slightly billowy. Um, and this lovely sweatshirting fabric was from Hey So Sister, and I've made it in like a pistachio green um, sort of fabric as well um, which goes with some of the other things that I've got in my wardrobe um, super comfortable to wear which seems to be one of the themes um, when I'm at work I need to be really really comfortable I need to be able to move quite quickly I spend some of my time on the floor I also spend a lot of my time outside and um, playing with the children so comfort is really key to my work wardrobe so it was really lovely to wear the Spina skirt because it's midi length, it doesn't get in the way too much and that t-shirt is really comfortable and means that I can move as well. The Tabitha t-shirt was in the Make It Simple book. Um, Tilly's wearing it here on the front. It's a really simple, straightforward t-shirt pattern to sew up. So here's the Tabitha t-shirt. I absolutely love this t-shirt pattern. I've sewn it up loads of times before. Here are the line drawings, the different sleeve options. You can do a short sleeve, which is what I tend to go for, three quarter length or full length sleeves. It's got a neckband um, and it's just a straightforward t-shirt to sew up. In terms of sizes, it comes in a UK six to a UK 24. So for a UK six, it's a 30 inch bust, 24 inch waist and 33 inch hip measurement. And then for a UK 24, it's a 48 inch bust measurement, 42 inch waist measurement and 51 inch hip measurement. In terms of fabric suggestions, they recommend light to medium weight knit fabrics with at least 10% crosswise stretch, like a jersey, interlock, stretch velvet, lightweight French terry or sweater knit. Um, so that was the t-shirt pattern. And then the skirt pattern is a free pattern by the little pomegranate. I absolutely love this skirt pattern. I've sewn up so many versions already. Um, this is what it looks like. Um, it comes in sizes UK 6 to 34 and it's aimed at beginners and you need woven fabric to sew up this skirt. Here are the line drawing just so you can see what they look like. So it's got this gorgeous ruffle on the bottom. I've sewn it up in really stable cotton fabric and a chambray fabric but I've also sewn it up in a really drapey fabric as well. And I think it works in so many different um, woven fabrics. Um, it's a gathered skirt which sits on your waist, designed for easy fitting. It's got an elasticated waistband, gentle shaping at the hips roomy pockets and my favourite thing, a ruffle hem. Um, it's been designed with beginners in mind so you'll find the instructions full of helpful tips and simple construction. It really is an absolute dream to sew up as a pattern. In terms of fabric recommendations, they recommend light to medium weight woven fabrics um, like a cotton lawn, poplin, shirting, seersucker. I've made one in linen which works perfectly as well. And then more drapey fabrics like a viscose rayon, tensile twill and crepe will give a really lovely floaty look, but they are slightly trickier to sew with. In terms of sizes, for a UK 6, it's a 25 inch waist circumference and 34 and a half inch hip circumference. And then for a 34, it's a 51 and a half inch waist circumference and 61 inch hip circumference. I absolutely love the Sabina skirt and I'm definitely going to sew up quite a few more uh, for my wardrobe. I love wearing it, it's really comfortable um, and you can style it with lots of different t-shirts and tops and things tucked into it. 
all left out as well. So the next day, it was still a work day, but it was a PE day. So I popped on another pair of my Sew Over It Hubie leggings and I made some in this gorgeous bubble gum. It was called bubble gum activewear fabric that I got from Semi Sunshine. How amazing is that fabric? And as soon as I saw it, I knew that I needed to have some of it so that I could turn it into some leggings that I could wear to school because I thought the children would absolutely love seeing me in a pair of these leggings. I love the Hubie leggings. They're perfect for work. They're really comfortable without feeling too tight around my tummy. Um, I love that really deep waistband as well. And they're quite um, sort of slim fitting. The other thing that I really love about the Hubie leggings is there's no side seam, um, no outside um, seam on the trousers. You've only got that inseam, which makes them even more comfortable to wear. So here are the line drawings for the Sew Over It Hubie leggings. You can sew up three quarter length or you can sew up full length. And then you can also do something different with the waistband. I've only ever just sewn up a regular waistband, but you can do color blocking if you want to. So you can see that waistband um, where you've got that different paneling piece in the middle. I've only ever sewn up the straightforward waistband um, because I've always sewn it up with really jazzy fabric. So maybe I should think about getting some plainer fabrics and sew up some color blocking. So in terms of sizes, it comes in a UK six up to a UK 30. So for a UK six, it's a 31 inch bust measurement, 24 inch waist measurement and 34 inch hip measurement. And then for a 30, it's a 57 inch bust, 50 inch waist and 60 inch hip. In terms of fabric recommendations, they recommend light to medium weight activewear knit fabrics like polyester spandex or polyester elastane blends, four way stretch or lycra with at least 50% horizontal stretch. Now, I'd highly recommend the Hubie leggings by Sew Over It. They come together really nicely. Um, they're really straightforward to sew up and it's quite a quick pattern to sew up as well. And they're really comfortable. They're great for doing pee lessons uh, with four and five year olds. So definitely recommend that pattern. So for the next day, I had a little think about some of the things in my wardrobe that I haven't been worn for a while. And I've got some Jennifer Lauren handmade Bastion clots that I absolutely love. I've made about four or five pairs of the Bastion clots. They're a really comfortable um, sort of clots pattern. They're quite high waisted. They've got really deep pockets. And I love that they give the effect of a skirt whilst being um, like clots. And then I've got an Anna Allen Anthea blouse that I've made in a cotton lawn fabric that I got from Semi Sunshine, um, which I absolutely love, but I haven't worn a huge amount. So I tried pairing both of them together by tucking the blouse into the clots. Um, and I feel like it works really nicely because the clots are quite high waisted and really fitted around the waist. Um, I was a little bit worried about the blouse being too sort of voluminous and the clots being quite voluminous. But I think because you've got that um, waistband that sort of sits quite high on your waist and is, is quite close fitting, I feel like it works nicely with that oversized blouse and the oversized clots. So the clots are just in a blue chambray. I can't remember where I got this chambray from. Um, but they're just in a blue chambray. I think it might have been like pound fabrics or something because I wanted to test out the fit of the Bastion clots before I sewed them up in other fabrics. I've used buttons, a mixture of buttons that I got from um, Ethel and Joan, which I really love. They're clear, but two of them have got these little speckled green bits in and it's the same mirrored on the other side. So here are the clots. They've got this really interesting pocket detail um, where if I open it up, the pocket detail is actually secured by the buttons and then fastened into that waistband. And the pockets are so roomy, which I love a roomy pocket, especially if I'm gonna wear it to school. And then they are super wide legs, so they do look like when you're wearing them, it looks like you're wearing a skirt. You see how wide each um, sort of leg pattern piece is. So it does give the impression that you're wearing a skirt. Um, so that is the clots, and because I've made them in this blue chambray, it means that they go with so many different things. Like I've got a couple of um, quite funky t-shirts with patterns all over them. I've also got some blouses that this goes with really nicely. And then the blouse that I opted to pair it with is this Anna Allen Anthea blouse made in this really vibrant blue sort of abstract print um, cotton lawn that I got from Simi Sunshine. The reason I bought this is because it's called Lola, my daughter's called Lola. And then I've just got some simple blue buttons going down the front. And I love the um, Anthea blouse. You can turn it into a dress as well, but it's got these really poofy sleeves. Uh, it's got a slightly curved hem, which I really love as well. And I really love the neckline. And you finish the neckline with bias binding. So in terms of the Anthea blouse, it's an Anna Allen pattern. 
Um, like I said, you can sew up the blouse or you can sew up the dress and I've sewn up both um, variations and I love both of them. They're super comfortable. It's a dartless blouse and dress with puff sleeves. Comes in sizes double zero to 22. So for a double zero, it's a 31 inch bust measurement, 24 inch waist measurement and 34 inch hip measurement. And then for a 22, it's a 48 inch bust measurement, 41 inch waist measurement and 51 inch hip measurement. And then in terms of fabric recommendations, they recommend woven fabrics like a voile, a lawn, um, medium to lightweight woven fabrics. And then for the Jennifer Lauren Bastion Colots, this is what the pattern looks like. I really love them. They're super voluminous and really, really comfortable to wear. So it says the Bastion Colots combine everything we love about 1940s sailor pants, 1930s beach pyjamas and the modern A-line skirt silhouette. The Bastion Colots feature a sailor style front button opening with deep roomy pockets cleverly integrated into the waistline. Gently fitted at the natural waist, the legs drape effortlessly down over the hips in a breezy flared silhouette. With two length options falling to mid calf or above the knee, wear Bastion Colots with fitted knit tops or loose button up blouses tucked in or tied at the waist. And they are aimed at confident beginner seamstresses. So these are the line drawings. So there's different length options, but both options are still quite voluminous and really full. And then you've got that really clever construction uh, with the buttons along the pockets. It's really lovely and really interesting pattern to sew up. In terms of fabric recommendations, they recommend a wide range of light to midweight woven fabrics with some drape. The chambray works really nicely and you do still get that lovely drapey movement from the chambray. And for summer, choose any of your favourite fabrics from cotton lawn, voile and poplin to linen and chambray. And then for winter, choose midweight denims, pinwell baby cords, flannel, wool and wool blends. In terms of sizes, comes in a um, size 6 to 24. So for a 6, it's a 24 inch waist measurement and 35 inch hip measurement. And then for a 24, it's a 42 inch uh, waist measurement and 53 inch hip measurement. Um, and I was really pleased that those two patterns went really nicely together. Um, and then the next day, I decided to pop on one of my favourite um, Tilly and the Buttons indigo dresses made in an absolutely gorgeous um, cotton fabric that I got from Somi Sunshine that's got animal print all over it. And if you followed me for a while, you'll know that I absolutely love tigers and I love anything to do with animals too. Um, and this is my version. So it's the Tilly and the Buttons indigo dress. Um, and I've used the add-on pack to do the button down bodice at the back and then to add the ruffle on the bottom to make it a midi length skirt. I've gone for short sleeves on this version as well. Um, and I absolutely love this fabric. I just think it's so fun. I love that I've positioned that tiger right in the center front. And then you've got like giraffes and zebras and parrots. And I just think it's such an incredible fabric. I love wearing this dress. It really makes me feel good about myself. And then on the back, I've gone for Ethel and Joan buttons that are clear, but with a little bit of orange to kind of draw out some of the orange that you've got in this dress. Really, really comfortable to wear. Um, the indigo dress has got pockets, which I've included in my version here. Um, and I just, everything about this dress just really makes me smile, especially those tigers that you've got on the fabric. And every time I wear it to school, the children absolutely love spotting all of the different animals that are printed all over it. So some information about the Tilly and the Buttons indigo dress. It's a smock style dress. Um, you can sew it as a shorter length or you can get the add-on pack as well. Um, there's an option to add ruffles and then you can add ruffles on the hem, which I absolutely love. Um, in terms of sizes, it comes in two size banding, so 6 to 24 or 16 to 34, and it's aimed at confident beginners. Um, in terms of fabric recommendations, they recommend light to medium weight wovens, like a cotton lawn, a chambray and a viscose. Um, it's a really comfortable um, dress pattern. It's a smock style, so it means it is ever so slightly oversized. And like I said, there's the add-on pack, so you can do the button down back and then add the ruffle on the skirt as well. In terms of sizes, for a UK 6, it's a bust measurement of 30 inches, a waist measurement of 24 inches, and a hip measurement of 33 inches. And then for a 34, it's a high bust measurement of 56 inches, a bust measurement of 60 inches, a waist measurement of 53 inches, and then a hip measurement of 61 inches. 
It's one of my favourite dress patterns alongside the Deer and Doe Myosotis and I've sewn up quite a few. I think I've sewn up over 10 versions of the Tilling in the Buttons indigo dress, all the different variations that you can sew up. But I think the add-on pack is definitely my favourite. I really love that button down back detail and I really love the ruffle on the hem and also that midi length. I think that's a style of dress that really suits me. Um, so that was a really fun dress to wear to school. And then for day 14 of Me Made May, I popped on another of my favourite summer dresses. So we had a really warm day in London on day 14 and I went for brunch with one of my friends. We went to the Ivy, which is always a really lovely treat. So I wanted to pop on a dress that made me feel really good about myself. So it's a dress made in a gorgeous, um, I thought it was viscose, but actually now I'm handling it. I think it's a rayon fabric that I got from Oh so Shop with this beautiful green shade of fabric with all the flowers printed all over it. And the pattern that I used for this gorgeous fabric is a selkie pattern and it is the Rossetti dress, um, which has got different options. So you can sew up a mid-length dress, a maxi dress or a blouse. Just to say with this pattern, it is very fabric hungry because the skirt is cut on the bias. So if you do sew up the maxi, you need about five meters of fabric. So I have actually only sewn up one version of this dress just because it's got, it takes so much fabric. In terms of sizes, it comes in a UK six to 26. So for a UK six, it's a bust measurement of 31 inches, a waist measurement of 23 inches and a hip measurement of 34 inches. And then for a UK 26, it's a 53 inch bust, 45 inch waist and 56 inch hip measurement. They recommend light to medium weight fabrics that have drape like a crepe, a viscose and a tensile. Um, the dress has no fastenings but it has got an elastic waist and you attach the elastic, you stitch it on the inside of the dress where the bodice and the skirt are joined. Um, it's got a v-neckline, relaxed fit bodice with a gathered yoke detail and it's got these really beautiful ruffles um, which I'll show you in a second and then the bias cut skirt. It drapes so beautifully and then it's got these slightly grown on sleeves and then it's got the yoke at the back, not that you can see it because the fabric is so busy, um, but it's got these beautiful little ruffles um, at the front. It's going to be a bit tricky to hold up and show you, but it's got these beautiful ruffles um, along the front and obviously on the other side as well. Um, it's got so much gorgeous drape to the dress. It's so beautiful. And then the waist, I don't know if you're going to be able to see, but it has actually got elastic. So it sort of brings it in at the waist as well. I love this fabric and it's a dress that feels so beautiful to wear. I think because that skirt is so lovely and floaty and drapey as well. So I love that and I felt really lovely wearing it to brunch and because it's got an elasticated waist, um, it meant that I could eat lots of yummy food as well and my waistband would expand with my tummy. So that was everything that I wore for week two of Me Made May. Do let me know in the comments below which of those outfits was your favourite and if you don't follow me on Instagram, I've started sharing a reel each week of my outfits so you'll get an idea of what I've worn across the week as well. I think it's quite helpful to see the garments move on my body. So I've started sharing that over on Instagram, just some video footage of the outfits on my body so you can see how they move as part of Me Made May. But I think moving forward, if I've got time, I might start doing that for some of my outfits across the week and then that will give you a really good idea of what my wardrobe looks like without having to pull everything out. Because I think if I went through everything in my wardrobe, the video would be very, very long. Thank you as always for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, it'd be really great if you could hit that subscribe button. You'll get notified of when I bring out my next video. Thank you as always for watching. Take care and I'll be back soon with another video. Bye.